Hello viewers, I'm Guy on Couch, and this is my review show, where I'll be reviewing the first five episodes of an anime series to see if it'll hold my interest, or if I'm hoping the Men in Black will come and wipe my memory. Now, for those of you who have seen our previous episode, you'll already be familiar with our grading scale, but for those of you who are newer, we'll toss it up right here. True? Now we use a five-point grading scale, ranging from me being asleep on the couch to being at the edge of the seat. Now, we only watched the first five episodes just to get a general idea for the show and to see if it's something I'd like to keep watching or even recommend. By the way, thank you to Bobby, Indiana Dro 89, and Orange Moth for their recommendations. We'll be watching those in the future, but for right now, we're watching Psychopaths. Or as I like to call it, give this one a Psychopaths. Not like a passing grade, but just like a pass on the series altogether. Before you leave, let me just give you my opinion, and then I'll tell you how bad of a person you are based on your stress levels. Before we get to the nitty gritty, here's the synopsis. Red is a professor giving a lecture. Try to stay awake. Justice and the enforcement of it has changed. In the 22nd century, Japan enforces the civil system, an objective means of determining the threat level of each citizen by examining their mental state of sign of criminal intent, known as their psychopaths. Into this world steps a young woman with an honest desire to uphold justice. However, as she works alongside a veteran enforcer, she soon learns that the civil system judgments are not as perfect as her fellow inspectors assume. She wrestles with the question of what justice truly is and whether it can be upheld through the use of a system that may already be corrupt. Ah. Alright. <laughs> well, let's uh, pull out our dominators and get to judging. Pace. This show is just so slow. Uh, yeah. uh, until about, like, episode three, when it picks up. But even then, it doesn't pick up that much. Uh, honestly, if I hadn't agreed to watch five episodes of this, I would have stopped after the first. So, much like the writers, we're gonna throw pacing right out the window. Damn, it feels good to be a gangster. All right, all right. I'll be fair. Listen, the bad pacing is mostly due to bad writing, poor research, and just a lot of unnecessary exposition. It starts to pick up around episode 4 and 5, and it seems like it's building up steam, but the show isn't really about the rest of the series. So for our purposes, as far as pacing goes, I'm gonna have to give it a thumbs down. And now it's time for characters. Let's start with Akane. First day on the job, more like picked right out of a crowd. Am I right? <laughs> Am I right? I'm right. I'm fucking right. Listen, I get it, commenters. We need, like, an outside perspective so that we can teach the audience about the ways of the world. But it stretches suspension of disbelief just a little bit when the person who is uniquely qualified to do this job knows jack shit about it and has all sorts of crazy ideas like getting along with people that rank high on the stress meter It just doesn't make sense that you have a totalitarian government where everyone is implanted with things that make them explode if their stress levels get too high, and they don't spend any time indoctrinating their populace. Okay. This is more to do with the setting as a whole, but Akane is kind of indicative of a lot of the problems that I have in the series. She's entertaining enough, and she has some pretty good points here and there, but for the most part, as a audience surrogate, it just drives me to the Ah, Genoza. 2D fucking by-the-book detective gets, like, no characterization till the fifth episode, so... Not really worth my time. Kogami, the secondary protagonist, and actually pretty interesting. Uh, he's got a bit of a logic to him, even if that logic leads him to do really crazy stuff. Um, 
There's some things about his characterization that don't really make a lot of sense in the first and second episode. Uh, particularly how he rapidly spins from being the, you know, sort of silent, grim killer in the first one. And then in the second episode is suddenly having his heart melting and the ice around it from Akane's loyal justice, I don't know, changing the guard kind of thing. Uh, but he's still an interesting character to watch, particularly once it gets to about episode three, four, or five. I'm assuming he gets even better as time goes on, and he's certainly got a few skeletons under the bed. Uh, also, him and Masaoka seem to be the only ones that actually want to do police work, so that's kind of nice. Masaoka. He's actually pretty likable. Uh, pretty stereotypical. It's clear that he's got some, like, you know, secrets to hide and things in the background that I'm sure they'll go into later, uh, but as the senior detective stereotype, he's pretty fun to watch and he's got all sorts of cool tricks to back up his uh, crazy skills. Here we see him doing some groundbreaking detective work. Uh, how did you know he was a bad guy? Maybe it's because he was hiding behind a fucking column, being sketchy as hell. You know who does that? Bad guys. Which you'd know if you'd had any job training whatsoever, Akane. In any case, Masaoka's fun to watch and interesting when he's not name-dropping random philosophers for no apparent reason. More on that later. Um, and if I was going to watch this show again, I'd probably look forward to see what secrets he's hiding. Kagari. A lot of K-name characters in this show, huh? Anyways, young, kind of dumb, exciting. It's fun to watch him go from the sort of silly, happy-go-lucky character who's kind of the comic relief of the gang to being kind of crazy and clearly, you know, why he's with the detectives, uh, but like everybody else, they just don't do very much for his characterization in the first five episodes at least. So, as for the other characters, I don't really have much for them, mostly because the show doesn't give me much to go off of. Silent Lady, Boob Lady, just kind of boring characters with a couple fun lines in the case of Boob Lady. And the main bad guy shows up for like eight minutes total of runtime between episodes one and five, which is fine, but doesn't give me much to go off of whether or not I like him or not. On to the story. The way that the story is crafted for this show is probably best explained through this dramatic reenactment. All right, playing the episode. Uh, whenever you're ready. Alright, so we got a little bit of backstory and we're gonna have to make our Great! Seriously, it feels like they just threw everything at the wall just to see what would stick and didn't bother making it all make sense afterwards. There's also like this weird tendency to try to sound smart by throwing in a bunch of philosophers or references to stuff, but more often than not, they're either totally wrong or completely irrelevant. Here's a few examples. Johnny Mnemonic, for those of you who are too young to be watching this, is an old movie where Keanu Reeves stars as a courier in a cyberpunk setting where people have to put data inside their brains to take it to where they need to go, and then he gets wrapped up in a bunch of intrigue as people try to keep him from saving the world with this information, basically. They put this reference in episode 3, where the murderer has the chip that activates the droids to go murder motherfuckers named Johnny Mnemonic. In case you haven't noticed, the episode has nothing to do with carrying important information. Nothing to do with government entry, really, unless you count the bullshit of, like, trying to hide your ass so you don't get caught with a murderer being on your staff. And nothing to do with Keanu Reeves. I mean, they could have just written Payback on the card, and that would have made more sense, because at least that's a Mel Gibson movie about murdering people for revenge. Thus the name. Okay, so you've got these people that are disguising themselves, or the person that is disguising themselves as these avatars of real people that he's murdered. And then he gets to the end, and then he calls these these avatars, the platonic ideals of these people, which is wrong, 
because Plato's allegory of the cave was about the shadows of what we perceive being the shadows of the true things that exist in the world. These images that he's created and puts in place of the real thing is actually the collection of all of the bullshit that people have been seeing on the web put together into the perfect form of that thing. It's a bunch of stuff leading to one true thing, not one true thing leading to a bunch of illusions. It's the exact opposite of what they're trying to say. Everything about this show's setting just makes so little sense and is so poorly explained. Is everything a hologram? Are people just walking around naked with holograms and AR making it look like they have clothes? Are some of these holograms hard light? Because we see them holding things up in some episodes and somehow these things don't fall to the ground with what should, for all intents and purposes, be just an image. How can a government that has so much control over its people that it can inject everyone with something that makes them explode when they get hit with a laser pointer somehow not have full coverage of the entire city with their magic stress-detecting cameras? How can the police be so terrible at their jobs in a totalitarian system? Probably because there's only six of them, which, again, makes very little sense. Speaking of the system, how does the system even work, logically speaking? If it's all stress-based, then how are people not getting just purged all the time when they get even a little frustrated? Uh, I mean, do you just, if you can control your emotions, do you just get to walk around purging fools and nobody can do anything about it? Like, how does any of this shit work? Alright guys, it's time for my predictions. And I'll admit, these were a little rough. Here we go. the rum always done. Alright viewers, prediction number one. The writers will actually tie up some of these loose ends. I know I've bitched a lot about how the setting doesn't make sense, and really you should try to have a setting make some sense by the fifth episode, but fair enough. Maybe this one just takes a little more time to get there. Prediction number two. Akane is a loophole in the system. It's just blatant foreshadowing when her friends are like, oh, you somehow have great mental health despite the fact that your job is incredibly stressful and you clearly aren't handling it well. Yeah, come on. Number three, uh, the main villain, whose name I don't remember, um, his plan probably sucks. It's probably not very well thought out, and it probably only makes sense within the context of the show. Number four, they will actually explain the god computer. I really hope they explain the civil system, because it, it's really bad. Finally, number five, uh, Kagari, spiky hair guy, is gonna die. Or become the next antagonist, but I'm betting that he's gonna die. Well, guys, when it comes to Psychopaths, originally I was going to give it a 2.5. However, after about a two-hour bitch fit with True, where we suddenly figured out all the shit that they could have done way better and it would have made for a way better show, I'm going to put this one back to about a 1. Look, just instead of watching this, go watch Judge Dredd. Literally either of them. They're both way better than this and have a better understanding of law and order. Even the Stallone. Yes. Well, guys, that's about that for us. Tune in next time as we watch the first five episodes of Voltron, the Netflix series. Until then, keep living that couch life, viewers. Thanks for watching, and if you liked what you've seen, then feel free to like, comment, and subscribe down below. If you didn't like it, do all those things anyways. What have you got to lose? Now I'll leave a comment telling me about how wrong I am about psychopaths, and I will completely ignore you. And while you're down there, go ahead and check out the rest of our material that we've got at Believe It Entertainment. We've got our Pokemon Yellow Nuzlocks. We've got our 
Believe It Entertainment plays Mafia 3. Heck, we've got our previous episode of Guy on Couch Reviews. We've got a lot of stuff out there. If you're bored, come check it out. If you're not bored, well, leave it on on your screen so we get the views. Till next time.